Hi there, this is Allison with Let's Go Travel Tips. Today we've got the information that you've been waiting for and wondering about what's going on with testing, masking, and um, children under five being able to cruise on Princess, as well as some updates from Carnival. We've already got information about how Russia invading Ukraine is affecting some cruise itineraries already, and we're gonna have a lot more of that going forward, I'm sure, as well as a lot of other updates. So first of all, I would like to welcome all of our Let's Go family members thank you very much for your great support and for really being um, what what makes this what it is so thank you and also a big welcome to everyone who is new we are really excited to have you with us as well if there is anyone here who hasn't subscribed yet we would love to invite you to subscribe to our channel I think you're going to find it a really important part of your day every day I bring you updates about everything that is going on with situations all over the world that affect cruising what the rules are right now all the protocols as well as lots of information about what's going on right now and a lot of fun we have a lot of fun here together so first of all um, yesterday I was on a call with princess and during that phone call they said that the protocols moving forward would be first of all um, for testing they said would be um, if you wanted to get a PCR test you would be able to do that within three days of sailing and if you wanted an antigen test you would be able to do that within um, two days of sailing they also um, pointed out that um, if you are on a cruise that leaves like February 26 even if you like left today and you are on board when March 1st rolls around that mask requirement goes away and then it is up to the passengers themselves if they want to wear a mask or not so we had wanted some clarification on that and I was so excited to hear and I'll still love to hear from you who are on board but um, what they are saying from Princess is that on March 1st that absolute requirement goes away the other thing that I thought was so exciting now is that children who are under the age of five can go ahead and cruise with princess they will not be included in that five percent of unvaccinated passengers and so I thought it was really great for all the families who wanted to be able to travel that now um, especially if they've got a cruise scheduled or are looking at scheduling one that now you can bring those young children with you and so I think that is just awesome and I want to point out the reason that they are not included in that 5% unvaccinated amount because you know 95% uh, or more need to be vaccinated of the crew and the passengers well um, those children are not eligible for a vaccine because there's not one available yet um, with grandchildren in that age group I do hope that we get one soon um, we're sure waiting on that but until we do um, I'm glad that they're opening up a little bit so that families can travel together if they would like now now that I've told you this, that is what they said yesterday when I was on the call. This morning, I got um, one of our great Let's Go family members sent me. They got an emergency notification. They'll be on the Enchanted Princess coming up. And in their notification, it says that bring your, um, well, bring your original proof of COVID vaccine and you need to bring your proof of a negative COVID test, antigen or PCR taken within three days. And so... Um, clearly maybe they've adjusted it since I was on that call yesterday so if any of you have any more information about that boy would I love to hear from you this information like I said is just from someone that is scheduled upcoming soon on the um, Enchanted Princess and so they got that emergency notification in their email so I looked at the princess website and it is still showing um, the same thing that they updated back on February 14th and if you haven't seen my video about that um, just go back to February 14th and you'll be able to see it but um, and by the way if you didn't know if you're watching one of our videos and you know how underneath the video it says the name of the channel and um, I think under that maybe is where it says how many subscribers you have but if you click on the name of the channel it will take you to the channels page and then you can see all of our videos you'll have to scroll down and kind of look but um, we try to keep them in chronological order and then we've got some playlists but I just wanted to let you know that because that's what I do when I find a channel that I love and I want to go back and watch um, things that they've done before as well as if I saw a video that I really liked and I need to refer to it again that's how I find it again
but anyway um, so on the princess website they have not updated this information yet so this is really breaking news so I just wanted to make you aware of that and um, like I said I'd love to hear from any of you that have any information about that now the update that um, carnival just released is just um, a quick one regarding testing at their ports so carnival says that through March 31st of 2022 they will have um, um, testing and the cost is going to be $100 per test for the Carnival Conquest, the Carnival Liberty, and the Carnival Radiance. And uh, they are still waiting. Um, they want everybody to be aware that in Charleston for the Carnival Sunshine and in Jacksonville for the Carnival Spirit, they have not been able to line up testing there at the port yet. And so if you're going to be on one of those sailings, um, you're going to need to line up a test um, in other ways. And so just be really aware of that. But at least through March 31st and hopefully through April 30th, they will have testing in port for those other three ships. So I thought that was great information for that. And remember that um, as is in that video that I put out the other day um, for April 14th, the April 14th update, um, Princess still in Fort Lauderdale in Los Angeles and San Francisco still has that DocGo.com option and I think that's a very handy one especially for people who are traveling in and then they're going to be um, in town for a few days before their cruise. Alrighty, the next thing I want to talk to you about is how the awful situation with Russia invading Ukraine is already affecting travel itineraries and I want to start out by saying first of all um, like I said yesterday, I hope we all continue to pray for the Ukrainian people and um, for God to be with them. And um, as I've thought about this a lot, though, I just wanted to share with you my thoughts. And, you know, I think we need to pray for a lot of Russian people, too, because there's a lot of really good people in Russia and they don't agree with what's going on either. And so I just wanted to put that out there so that none of us accidentally lump all of the um, Russian people in with what the bad people are doing. And so um, what their leaders are doing, that's not them. And um, so I just I just felt like I should say that and then I want to include them in our prayers. Um, I follow this really lovely, I wanted to tell you this, I follow this really lovely account on Instagram and you have to know about me, I love Russia. I love their history, I love their people. I believe that they're an incredibly strong, strong people and an amazing culture that they have. And so um, I've studied it. We've been to um, St. Petersburg. The reason that I booked the cruise, we're going to need to cancel since our daughter's having a baby and we're not going to go there right now anyway, even if she wasn't. Um, it was so that we could go to Moscow because I just want to go stand in that historic place and think of the good. So anyway, um, I follow this account on Instagram and it is called Russian underscore treasure. So um, this, um, I think it's a lady that does it. She just posts um, beautiful pieces of jewelry that have been made for Russia for the Imperial family. Um, just anything that came out of there that is beautiful. And she talks about it and shares the history. And you need to see her post yesterday. She posted the most beautiful thing. She said, you know, I've never talked about politics here, but today I'm gonna talk about it. And she just was saying how so many of their people don't agree with the invasion of Ukraine. They don't think it's right. They consider it awful and that that is not the Russian people. So if you are on Instagram, you might want to take a look at the um, Russian underscore treasure um, account there. It is really um, amazing. She did an amazing post yesterday. And while you're on Instagram, I just thought of this. You can look for let's go travel tips.com. I need to find some more beautiful pictures and things. I need to be more active there and I'm going to be. So follow us there. So anyway, the updates that we have got, I've wanted to start off by letting you know that back on January 28th, um, the State Department did issue a level four warning about not traveling to Ukraine and not traveling to Russia because they cannot ensure the safety of anyone there. I saw that when it happened and I've just kind of been waiting to see um, if um, what is happening now really did happen and so I just wanted to make you aware that they say do not travel to Russia due to ongoing tension along the border with Ukraine the potential for harassment of US citizens the embassy's limited ability to assist US citizens in Russia and COVID-19 and related entry rest restrictions terrorism harassment by Russian government security officials and in the arbitrary enforcement of local law 
And so I wanted to make you all aware of that. I don't think that there is any of us who um, would probably be planning to go to Russia right now, but I wanted to make you aware of that and the same with Ukraine. If you're going to go to Ukraine, there is actually an online form that you have to fill out so that the US government can try to keep track of you. Um, although I think that the chance of doing that would be um, really hard. But anyway, I wanted to let you know about that. And along with that, we have got two updates. Um, because we still have that cruise booked, um, uh, we received an emergency notification from Princess and one of our Let's Go family members, thank you so very much, shared with us the update that they received for a similar cruise that they are taking on um, Norwegian. Now, I do want to say yesterday in the comments, one of our Let's Go family members said that they just canceled their cruise yesterday. And so I want to let you know that you absolutely can do that. And at the same time, if you still want to visit that region, I would hang on a minute because um, you don't need to worry. Um, cruise lines aren't going to be going there. Like with the situation as it is now, they're not going to be going to Russia. And so it might take some a little longer to announce that or to rearrange their itineraries. But if you still want to go, um, if you want, if you were going just to go to Russia, yeah, cancel your cruise. But um, like our cruise goes to so many more amazing places. And I don't know, we're just going to have to really watch the developments on that. But I love that right now, if you book your cruise by March 2nd, you can still cancel up to 30 days before you sail and get your money back in a future cruise credit. And so I just want to point that out that we do have some wiggle room on some of these cruises to wait and see what happens before you decide if they're no longer going to all the places you wanted to go and you need to cancel. So having said that, let me tell you really quick, um, Princess in their emergency notification that we received says we understand that you may have some concerns regarding your upcoming sailing given the events, uh, the evolving events with uh, UK, re sorry, regarding the um, evolving events with Ukraine and Russia. We are closely monitoring the situation as the safety and security of our guests and team members are our highest priority. Should we amend any of our published itineraries, we will promptly advise booked guests and their travel advisors. Please note that our contact centers will not have any ad additional information at this time. We appreciate your understanding and patience. And so that is what Princess sent us late last night. And then last night we received this from a Let's Go family member. And it just says on, um, it says the health, safety, and security of our guests, crew, and communities we visit are our top priority. Due to the escalated situation between Russia and Ukraine, we have made the decision to alter itineraries and remove calls to St. Petersburg, Russia from our sailings for the remainder of the year. Our team is diligently working to confirm replacement ports and would advise all impacted guests and travel advisors as soon as possible. We share your disappointment and, sis and sincerely apologize for any inconvenience this may have caused, but ho also hope you can understand the necessity of this action. And so I honestly, I think Norwegian is awesome for being on top of that and announcing it right away. Um, I think that that's what's going to happen with the other cruise lines. Um, I wouldn't go to Russia right now um, simply because of the warning from the State Department and really the honesty of the uncertainty of not knowing what to expect. Um, when we were going to go to St. Petersburg, we were going to go with a princess excursion that you take the high-speed train down to Moscow and spend the day there and then take it back. And um, I'm just not going to go somewhere that my safety can't be guaranteed. And so, um, I think that's how most people are. And um, like I said, at the same time, our prayers do go to the Russian people. I know that this is going to be hard on their economy to not have people come, but hopefully things will um, get better so that maybe we can go another time and maybe um, not, you just never know. But anyway, just wanted to make you aware of what is going on with that. And so now we will talk about um, something else that's happy so that I don't cry for you again. Um, I wanted to let you know, this is just a quick update. Um, one of our Let's Go family members just got back from a cruise and she stayed at the Embassy Suites in Fort Lauderdale. And that was one of the hotels that we had been considering. And so I said, tell me what it's like when you go. And so her experience at that hotel was a lot like the one at the hotel that we stayed at and so she just said um, 
she said it looks great from the outside but on the inside it looks kind of tired it wasn't quite as clean as they would have hoped and she said they did have a very nice restaurant though where they could get a sandwich since their flight didn't land and they weren't able to check in until like 8 30 in the evening and she said they had a very nice breakfast buffet which embassy suites always do they have a wonderful breakfast buffet if you haven't been there like they give you um, so many options and so anyway and it's in the beautiful atrium there she thoroughly enjoyed it but she said the next time they go they will probably look for another place to stay another thing about her cruise I just wanted to let you know um, they just um, they were on the Panama Canal cruise that went from um, January 15th to February um, wait a minute sorry January 28th to February 12th and so she said that on that cruise they had to do testing at the port again and then uh, testing two days into the cruise but she said Princess handled it handled it very smoothly everything went great so no complaining about that and there were only 1500 passengers on board so she said that was awesome her only complaint about the food was that her husband always enjoys the beef medallions that um, those of you that have cruised with Princess before know that that has like for a long time now been one of the options that you can always get at every dinner in the main dining room. You know, they have like the things that change every night and then the things that are always available. And she said that was not available on their cruise and not very much beef at all, she thought. And so um, I'm hoping that as we move forward and the cruise lines can start sailing again at a higher capacity and actually making some money, hopefully um, some of those options will come back to the menu. That's what I'm kind of thinking. But I really appreciate her update and letting us know how everything went on the cruise. She said the service was superb. Um, the, and um, everything was great. The other thing that I wanted to let you know about is our Let's Go family member Dennis is so awesome. You know, the other night and um, then again on Monday, whoops, Tuesday, we talked about it in our live Monday night and then Tuesday morning um, when I did my video, I told you about that Alaska Cruise Companion and trying to buy it on used book sites. Well, you know what? He ordered one from the shops at Princess on the website and it's going to be delivered to his cabin on the Grand Princess when they cruise in July. And so here's the deal though. I'll do a video and show you how to find all this stuff. Um, maybe I could do that um, to put up on Sunday or something. I could do it. Um, when oh, Gordon's got a minute to help me and um, but anyway it is not available on all ships I just want to tell you that I went into the cruise personalizer on ours our sailing on the Royal Princess and the Royal Princess is not going to have that book I'm going to keep an eye out as we get closer to the cruise and see if they happen to add it but our ship it doesn't look like it's going to have that book so I wanted to let you all know about that I'll tell you quickly here how to get to it you just log into your cruise and remember how I showed you to go to manage your booking you just click on that and then across the top I think it's under onboard services it's like you click on that and that's where you can um, like sign up for your drink package all that but when you scroll all the way down it's like the, I think the very last thing is the shops of princess and when you click on that it brings up a list of things that you can um, buy and then have delivered to your stateroom when you get on the ship it's really awesome they have um, let me tell you what they have on ours they have like Stanley the bear McKinley Mac the moose you can buy um, you know the ship playing cards for the ship you'll be on a photo mug with the ship on it the princess cruise roller bag um, a reversible jacket um, a water bottle and then um, a gentleman's um, cologne and a lady's um, perfume as well and so I just wanted to make you aware of that and I'm telling you right now really quick and like I said I'll do a video showing you how to do that but um, if you want to look at your cruise then you'll be able to see if that's an option for you so I thought that was really exciting. So thank you, Dennis, for letting us know. Now, today I have talked long enough. And so tomorrow, catch me and I'll have more updates. Plus, um, I'm going to talk to you all about what to wear for formal night. Um, I'm getting a lot more questions on that. And I think it's mainly from people that haven't cruised on Princess or haven't cruised recently. And so I will let you know um, everything to do with what to wear on formal night. And um, I think it'll be extra valuable since we've been on three cruises since the restart. I'll be able to tell you what we're seeing more of and just kind of how it's going. So thank you all for sticking with me. I hope that you find these updates valuable. If you do, will you please give this video a thumbs up? If you've got any questions, just tuck them in the questions, uh, sorry, in the comments below and I'll get back to you. I will be talking to you all again really soon. You all take really good care. God bless you. Love you.
Bye-bye.